This video will show you some examples of how to symbolize point, line, and polygon vector data within ArcGIS Pro. We'll look at symbolizing data using both categorical and quantitative attributes, in addition to looking at different data classification methods for quantitative data symbolization. I have three vector feature classes within my map, polygons representing census block group boundaries, lines representing hydrology features, and finally points representing renewable solar energy sites. Because these file names are not very meaningful, I'm going to take the time within my contents pane to give each one of these layers a more meaningful name. Remember, changing the layer name does not alter the name of the underlying source vector feature class stored within the GeoDatabase. We'll start things off by showing how to symbolize point data. From the Appearance menu, I'm going to select the Symbology button, and this will open the Symbology pane. You can see that I have the primary symbology set to single symbol. I can click on the symbol, go in, and adjust things like the color and size to customize my symbology. Alternatively, I can go into the gallery and choose from one of the many predefined symbols that ArcGIS offers. In both examples I just showed, I'm symbolizing all of my data the exact same way. But what if I want to symbolize it using my attributes? Let's take a look at symbolizing these points by unique values specifically the type of solar type. This is stored in the icon attribute field. By setting that field and the primary value for unique values, I'm now symbolizing each and every solar site by its type. Under the More menu, I can go down and I can choose to hide all other values. This is useful if I don't actually have any values outside of the range shown here. Choosing Format All Symbols allows me to apply consistent symbology to each and every one of my unique values. Here I'm increasing the size of the points. Now let's move over to the Line Feature class. These hydrology lines are really difficult to see because ArcGIS chose gray as a default display color, so I'm going to go into the primary symbol and choose to display them by unique values. I'm going to use the attribute F-Type, which is the type of hydrology line. I'm going to zoom in and take a closer look just to make sure I'm happy with the symbology. The F-Type is categorical data. Now let's look how I can symbolize these data using quantitative information, specifically the stream order. The higher the stream order, generally the larger the stream. The stream order information is stored within the stream ord attribute, but note that if I change the attribute and then change the primary symbology, the attribute reverts to whatever attribute is first in the attribute field list. So, because I selected graduated symbols, I'm going to go back in and select stream ord as the field that I want to display. In graduated symbols, I'm displaying the stream order, which is numerical data, as increasingly thicker lines. I can go in, just like I did with the points, and format all the symbols. It probably makes sense if my hydro lines are symbolized with a color blue, so I'm going to change the properties of all of my symbols so that I now have blue lines. I have the options to make additional modifications to my symbology. For example, I can adjust the number of classes that I want to group my numerical data into, and I can also make modifications to the minimum and maximum size of each lines. The choices that I make here are entirely up to me and should be based on my specific goals and cartographic standards of the project. Now let's take a look at our census block group layer. Census data is very, very rich in attributes, and symbolizing it by unique values, especially using something like object ID, which is the internal identifier for each and every record, just creates a map that's a horrible mess and has way too many values for someone to interpret. I want to take advantage of the rich quantitative information that's in my census layer. So I'm going to move over to graduated colors. And for the field, I'm going to select P0030001. This corresponds to total population in each census block group. Changing the data classification method depends on the story you're trying to tell with your data. Although natural breaks are a great default choice, you may find that one of the other data classification methods better gets your point across. Choosing a less than optimal data classification method will mean that you mask important information within the data set. After you've selected your method and number of classes, it can be useful to view things like the histogram to show the number of records within each and every category this helps you better understand the distribution of your data as it relates to your data classification scheme. 
Although it can be tempting to choose a high number of classes, most people will find your data more interpretable if you choose a limited number of classes. That being said, sometimes having a higher number of classes can better illustrate a specific phenomena you're trying to get across to the end user. Now let's have a look at a situation in which I want to symbolize the same layer, the census block groups, by more than one attribute. I'm going to copy and paste my layer so that I have two copies of the exact same layer within my map. The difference is I'm going to symbolize the second layer by a different attribute using different symbology. I'm going to use the dot density symbology to symbolize the number of households, which is in the H0001 000001 field. In dot density symbology, one dot will correspond to a select number of records. This is a great way of getting across density type of information, hence the term dot density. Now, although the census attribute names make sense to me because I've read the metadata, if I hand this project over to a colleague, she may have difficulty understanding what I'm symbolizing here. Just as I gave my layers more meaningful names, I'm going to do the same for the attributes I'm using in symbology. I can change the population attribute right within the contents pane, but for the dot density symbology, I need to go into the symbology tab and edit the attribute there. Hopefully you realize that once you get the hang of the symbology interface, it's relatively easy to customize your symbology for vector layers within ArcGIS. Always keep in mind it's a good idea to give both the layers and the attributes meaningful names, whether you're working with a project or producing cartographic products.